NAD Framework Core is really fast, but did you know there's one weird trick that you can use to make it even faster? I'm talking about the query splitting feature that was introduced in EF Core 5. Query splitting allows you to tell NAD Framework that it should split your query into multiple SQL queries instead of generating one big query that uses SQL joins. Let's dive into the code and see how we can use query splitting to our advantage. I'm first going to set the scene for what we are going to be using to demonstrate how query splitting works in practice. We are going to start from the gatherings controller where we have only one endpoint and that is the endpoint for getting a gathering by ID. This endpoint is pretty simple, it just accepts an ID of the gathering from the route, creates a get gathering by ID query, sends that query using mediator and returns either 200 OK if the gathering is found or a 404 not found if the gathering is not found. Let's see how the get gathering by ID query handler looks like. As you can see, it has only one dependency, which is the iGathering repository. And if I scroll down to the handle method, let's see what we have inside. We are fetching our gathering using the gathering repository. We are returning a failure result, which will be translated to a 404 not found when the gathering is null. If the gathering is not null, we are creating a new gathering response instance and we are returning that as the result of our query handler. Notice that apart from the properties that are available on the gathering, we are also accessing the creator navigation property, the attendees navigation property and the invitations navigation property. This means that we aren't just loading the gathering from the database, but also the creator, the attendees and the invitations all at the same time. Let me show you the implementation in the gathering repository to see what I'm talking about. Here we can see the getPayID method implementation. We are accessing the gathering DB set. We are including the creator, the attendees and the invitations. And we are fetching our gathering by ID. I want to show you the SQL that NAD Framework is generating and sending to our database when we are executing this query. I'm going to start the application and head over to Postman. Here I already prepared a GET request for the gatherings by ID endpoint and I already provided a gathering ID that exists in the database. If I send this request, I'm going to get back a gathering. As you can see, we're getting a gathering with the name of .NET Meetup. The creator is me and we have a bunch of attendees and some invitations. Let me show you the query that NAD Framework is sending to the database with the implementation that we have in place. This is the SQL query that NAD Framework is sending to the database. If you take a closer look, you can see that there are two queries. The nested query, which I'm highlighting here, is getting the gathering by the ID from the gatherings table, and it's also joining on the members table to get the gathering creator. After we have fetched our gathering, we have a left join on the attendees table to get the attendees and also a left join on the invitations table to get the invitations. As you can see, NAD Framework is generating one large query with three join statements in this case. One join for each include statement that we specified in our code. When can this be problematic? Because of how joins work in SQL, if you end up having a lot of data being returned from your query, you run into a phenomenon called Cartesian Explosion. This can cause your SQL queries to take a very large amount of time to execute and sometimes even time out. I've had this happen to me very recently and I'll show you in just a moment how I solved it. Let's go back to our gathering repository implementation. I just showed you that for each of the include statements, NAD Framework is generating one join in SQL. However, we can use query splitting here to tell NAD Framework to send one SQL query for each of these include statements. To turn on query splitting, we have to specify as split query here, and that's all that we have to do. What will happen now is NAD Framework will not generate one big SQL statement, it will generate more than one SQL query and send them to the database one by one. Let's see how this actually works and what is the SQL that is being generated. I'll start the application again. Back in Postman, I'm sending our GET request again to the API. As you can see, we are getting the same response as before, so nothing has been broken. Let's take a look at the SQL that is being sent to our database. There's a few things to unpack here. First, notice that we have three SQL queries. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. Let's take a look at them one by one. This is the first SQL query that NAD Framework is going to send to the database. When this query completes, we will have our gathering in memory. 
then NED framework is going to send another query. This query is going to fetch the attendees. If you take a look at the select statement, you can see that we are only fetching the gathering information and the additional IDs that are used in the order by statement. So we aren't fetching the gathering and member data again from the database. We are just getting the attendees information. After that, NED framework sends one more query. This time we are fetching the invitations. If you take a look at the select statement, you can see that we only have the invitation information included. And again, the ID is for the order by statement. Again, we are using an inner join here on the invitations table and not a left join as was the case before. And everything is functioning the same as before. The main difference is that now we have three SQL statements sent to the database instead of one. Why would we even use this and what are the benefits? When you have a very large number of join statements, multiple individual queries will end up being more performant than actually executing all of the joins. This is something that you should test in your own applications and see which implementation is performing better and use that one. Another thing to consider here is that any framework is not sending these SQL statements all at the same time. Rather, it is sending them one by one. And this can be a little bit problematic because if we have concurrent updates to the attendees and the invitations tables, between the times that NED framework actually sends those queries to the database, we might end up with inconsistent results in memory. So this is something that you have to be aware of when using query splitting. Of course, you can mitigate this by creating a snapshot or serialized database transaction, but this creates a different set of problems that you have to deal with now. One more thing to consider is that each SQL statement that is sent to the database represents an additional round trip over the network. So if your database server is far away from your application server, so that your network round trip time is costly, this is something that you have to consider because it is going to impact your performance. Let's go back to Postman and I'm going to send the same API request. Just this time I'm going to use some ID that I know is not present in the database. I'm going to send the request and as expected I get a 404 not found telling me that the gathering that I requested was not found in the database. But if I take a look at the SQL that was generated this time, notice that we are only fetching the gathering from the database and there isn't a query to fetch the attendees or the invitations. This is precisely because NED framework is sending these queries one by one. The first query is the one that fetches the gathering. NED framework sees that the response is null and that there is no point to fetch the attendees and the invitations because they won't exist. So in this case, when the gathering does not exist in the database, query splitting will only generate one query instead of the three that we have in the previous example. I want to show you one more way that we can configure query splitting in the application. If I go over to program.cs and more specifically the part of the code here where I'm configuring the database context, what I can do is in this call to use SQL Server, there is one more parameter that I can specify and this one is an action for configuring the SQL Server DB context options builder. Let's see what we have available on this action. The one that we are interested in is the use query splitting behavior method, which allows us to configure query splitting at the database context level. We can do this by specifying a value for the query splitting behavior enum. And let's, for example, say we want all our queries for this database context to use query splitting. Now, by default, all the queries that NED framework sends to SQL Server are going to be split queries. If we want to revert back to single queries, we can do that manually. Back in our gathering repository, this call to as split query is no longer necessary because all of the queries are split by default. But if we want to revert back to a single SQL query, we can do that by specifying the as single query method, which will now generate only one SQL statement for the query that we are trying to execute. So you really have a lot of flexibility at your disposal when you want to decide if you want to do query splitting or not. If you learned something useful in this video, consider leaving it a like for the YouTube algorithm so that we can reach a wider audience and grow this channel. Also, if you want access to the source code that I'm using in this video, you can do that by supporting me on Patreon. Remember to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.